forget the image of Yogi Bear representing Yellowstone. We're talking about a sleeping Godzilla. Yellowstone National Park is a stunning place, known worldwide for its natural beauty. It's home to diverse wildlife, tall mountains, deep canyons, and hot geothermal features. However, it's also a place where about 2,000 earthquakes happen each year. This area is considered at risk for volcanic eruptions. Recently, the number of earthquakes has increased, causing concerns that a massive volcanic eruption could happen. If Yellowstone were to erupt, it could have severe consequences for the entire planet. So, why are there more earthquakes happening in Yellowstone? And is a supervolcano eruption imminent? In this video, we'll explore what's happening in Yellowstone and what it could mean for everyone on Earth. Yellowstone National Park, established in 1872, is the oldest and largest national park in the United States. It's mainly located in northwest Wyoming, but also stretches into parts of Montana and Idaho. Yellowstone is famous for its diverse plants and animals, including grizzly bears, elk, bison, wolves, and cougars. The park covers a large area with lakes, canyons, rivers, and mountains. One remarkable feature is Yellowstone Lake, one of the highest elevation lakes in the U.S. Beneath this lake lies the Yellowstone Caldera, North America's largest supervolcano. This supervolcano was formed by a series of eruptions that took place around 2.1 million years ago. Yellowstone sits in a region that has a history of volcanic and seismic activity. Over millions of years, the movement of the Earth's crust has created hot spots in this area. The Yellowstone Caldera, roughly oval in shape and about 50 by 70 kilometers in size, resulted from the last eruption, which occurred about 640,000 years ago. This region is not only known for its earthquakes, but also experiences 1,500 to 2,500 of them every year. In recent times, the frequency of earthquakes in Yellowstone has raised concerns. Some experts worry that this could lead to a major volcanic eruption, which could have catastrophic effects worldwide. Join us as we delve into the reasons behind the increased seismic activity and what it means for the future of Yellowstone and our planet. While most of the earthquakes in Yellowstone have magnitudes of 2.0 or lower, making them too small for people to feel, they can still be detected by a network of seismological monitoring tools called the Yellowstone Seismic Network, YSN. Gathering data during the winter can be challenging due to the cold temperatures and heavy snowfall. However, there is still enough information to show that there is seismic activity in the region. Over the past 50 years, more than 48,000 earthquakes have been recorded in the Yellowstone area. Over 99% of these earthquakes had magnitudes of 2.0 or lower, making them imperceptible to most people. In 1975, there was one earthquake with a magnitude of 6.0, two with a magnitude of 5.2, four with a magnitude of 4.0, and 379 with a magnitude of 3.0. One of the most significant earthquakes in the region was the Hebgen Lake earthquake in 1959, which had a magnitude of 7.3 and resulted in 28 fatalities and extensive damage to park infrastructure. The presence of the Yellowstone Caldera, a massive volcanic depression, along with the increasing frequency of seismic activity, has raised concerns about the dormant supervolcano's potential eruption. In recent weeks, there have been more than 340 earthquakes in the Yellowstone area, increasing fears about the possibility of a supervolcano eruption. Michael Poland, a scientist in charge at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which is a collaboration of eight organizations led by the U.S. Geological Survey, has stated, that the most significant concern for Yellowstone is not the volcano itself, but the earthquakes. There is a risk of future magnitude, seven earthquakes in the Yellowstone area. In recent months, there have been unusual occurrences in the park, such as the eruption of the steamboat geyser multiple times in a year, 
and the closure of park areas due to hot water and debris being ejected from previously dormant thermal features. Scientists at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory have increased their efforts to maintain seismic and GPS monitoring networks, including the installation of new monitoring infrastructure at Norris Geyser Basin and a continuous gas monitoring station near Mud Volcano. Scientists are also collecting geological and geochemical data to better understand Yellowstone's geological history and current conditions. In August, 136 earthquakes were located in the Yellowstone National Park region, with the largest having a magnitude of 2.7 on August 12th. Additionally, there was a swarm of 14 earthquakes in a three-day period from August 2nd to August 4th. About half of the seismic activity in Yellowstone comes from something called earthquake swarms. These swarms are when earthquakes happen close together in both time and place. While most swarms are short and last only a few days, some can include hundreds of earthquakes and stick around for months. These swarms often occur to the east and west of Hebgen Lake and the Norris Geyser Basin. In June, the University of Utah's seismograph stations reported 78 earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park. The largest one had a magnitude of 2.8 and occurred on June 17th. While these earthquake swarms are a concern by themselves, some scientists believe that a supervolcano eruption is quite unlikely. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory suggests that the most probable events in Yellowstone are lava flows, moderate earthquakes, and steam and water eruptions. These are different from the events that form the caldera. Lava flows are not sudden and destructive. Instead, lava slowly seeps out over a long period. The last volcanic activity in the park occurred about 70,000 years ago, so there's confidence among some experts that we might not see a super eruption in the future. Jacob Lowenstein, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory in California, believes that while super eruptions will happen on Earth, it's uncertain whether Yellowstone will experience one. Yellowstone has been relatively stable for the past 140 years, according to the United States Geological Survey, USGS, and they think it's highly likely to remain eruption-free for many centuries to come. Another possibility is that the volcano could become extinct. Two opposing forces act on the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone, the heat from below and the relative cold at the surface. If the heat decreases instead of increases, the chamber could solidify. Recent studies including one from 2022 in a science journal, revealed that one of the magma reservoirs under the Yellowstone caldera contains more magma than previously thought. However, it's still not enough to cause a supervolcano eruption. In the past, scientists estimated that the reservoir was mostly solid with about 5-15% of melted rock, but now they think it's more like 16-20%. to for a volcanic eruption to occur, there needs to be a significant amount of liquid magma, typically between 35% to 50% of the total magma present. The higher the volume of magma, the greater the likelihood of an eruption. It's worth noting that the increase in magma volume observed in recent studies isn't because the Earth is creating new magma. Rather, it's because scientists are better able to analyze existing data. Despite the scientific understanding, there is widespread concern among the public about the potential for a supervolcano eruption in Yellowstone. This concern can be traced back to a paper published in September 2014 by a team of scientists in the field of geochemistry and geophysics. In their research, they explored the hypothetical scenario of a supervolcano eruption in the Yellowstone caldera. According to their findings, such an eruption could blanket significant areas of states like Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and Colorado with three feet of volcanic ash. This ash, composed of broken glass and rock, would cover the Midwest and West, causing harm to vegetation, animals, structures, and machines. However, it's important to note that one of the paper's co-authors clarified that the paper wasn't an attempt to predict the future, he emphasized that even if Yellowstone were to erupt again, the worst-case scenario described in the paper is unlikely. 
Instead, smaller eruptions are much more common. So, why does the news often focus on the possibility of a major eruption? And why are people becoming increasingly concerned when experts agree that the likelihood of such an event is low? The primary reason is that the consequences of a Yellowstone eruption would be catastrophic. The effects wouldn't be limited to the United States or North America, but would have a global impact. A Yellowstone eruption could disrupt future food supplies, affect global weather patterns, and impact human activities. To provide some context, the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines in 1991, while significant, had a relatively small impact on world temperatures. Comparatively, the consequences of a major volcanic eruption are beyond our current scientific comprehension. Therefore, the potential for such an event remains a topic of concern and study. While the chances of any kind of eruption in the Yellowstone region, whether big or small, are incredibly slim, it can be interesting to imagine what might happen in various scenarios. As mentioned earlier, a small eruption would likely involve the release of steam, water, and lava flows. Another possibility is a typical volcanic explosion, usually preceded by a cluster of earthquakes in both time and location. This swarm of earthquakes would concentrate in a specific area of the park, leading to the release of magma to the surface. In the highly unlikely event of a much larger supervolcanic eruption, the warning signs would be more significant than what we typically observe. We might expect a series of intense earthquakes occurring throughout the park quite frequently. These earthquakes would play a crucial role in breaking up rocks, a necessary step for such an eruption. However, it's important to note that the chances of such an event are extremely low, around 0 bon 114, and super eruptions occur on a timescale of roughly every 100,000 years. Given the current increased seismic activity and the rising and falling of the ground, it's safe to say that Yellowstone is as stable as it has been for the past 140 years. However, there is another perspective on the cause of the heightened seismic activity in the Yellowstone region that doesn't relate to the fiery chamber beneath its caldera. According to a study by Ying Zhu, a geoscientist at Virginia Tech, tectonic plate movements, the constant shifting of rocks, may be responsible for the increased heat, rather than a magma plume as previously thought. To understand this, you need to grasp what tectonic plates are. Many millions of years ago, the Earth was a single landmass surrounded by a vast ocean, forming one giant continent known as Pangaea and a single ocean called Panthalassa. Over time, the Earth's outer crust heated and cooled, breaking apart into the continents and oceans we know today. While it may seem like the Earth is stationary when you look around, it's actually constantly changing and moving. The land beneath our feet, called the Earth's crust or lithosphere, is made up of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. You can think of these plates as pieces of a cracked shell floating on the incredibly hot sea of molten rock deep within the Earth's core. These tectonic plates are closely connected due to the heat in the Earth's core, which pushes them to move either toward or away from each other. This movement is known as plate motion or tectonic shift and it's an ongoing process. Have you ever noticed how the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa seem to fit together when you look at a globe? That's because these continents were once connected. Different continents and oceans formed when this enormous landmass split apart. Every year, these plates, which are massive chunks of land, move apart from each other, typically at an average rate of 0.6 inches. In some regions, like coastal California, this separation can be as high as around two inches each year. It's at the edges of these plates, where they come into contact with other plates, that friction with other plates can lead to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. This is why California experiences frequent earthquakes. The idea that plate movement and interactions at plate boundaries are responsible for Yellowstone's increased earthquakes and eruptions is a relatively recent theory. The commonly held belief was that a magma plume beneath the caldera caused these events. Yellowstone does exhibit characteristics of a volcano created by a hotspot of rising magma. 
A magma plume is a region in the Earth's lithosphere that is hot but still solid. These plumes originate from the boundary between the Earth's core and mantle. The presence of a caldera, one of the largest in the world, suggests the existence of a magma chamber. Another piece of evidence seemingly supporting the magma plume hypothesis is that Wyoming is located in the center of the North American tectonic plate, rather than near its edge, where you might expect more plate interactions. However, the main challenge with this theory is the lack of concrete proof of a magma plume rising from the mantle. Despite years of searching, no definitive evidence has been found. One intriguing clue comes from the helium gas produced by mud volcanoes in Yellowstone Park, which suggests a deep mantle origin. Yet it's important to note that this isn't definitive proof. Recent research by geoscientist Ying Zhou involved mapping the crustal discontinuities using a method called diffraction tomography. She used seismic activity as evidence to create a picture of what lies beneath the Yellowstone caldera. According to her findings, this is the first time that this type of seismic data has been analyzed using such an innovative imaging approach. Thanks to this research, geoscientists may now explore the mysterious formations beneath the Earth's crust that were previously beyond our reach. Surprisingly, there was no evidence of a plume in her research. Instead, the anomalies followed a pattern that resembled the shape of an ancient piece of oceanic crust called the Farallon Plate. Do you remember what a tectonic plate is? About 200 million years ago, this massive piece of the Earth's crust began to slide beneath the North American plate. The numerous eruptions in the Yellowstone region over the years are a result of this movement, where one plate grinds against and collides with another. According to Ying Zhou, this ancient oceanic plate eventually broke into pieces, causing disturbances in the unusual rocks in the Earth's mantle which led to volcanic eruptions. In the past 16 million years, the boundary between the states of Oregon and Idaho was created due to repeated rubbing and collisions. The friction between the North American plate and the submerged Farallon plate generates enough heat to cause magma to rise through weak spots in the Earth's crust. Therefore, the Yellowstone events are merely a new location where the Farallon plate's transcontinental journeys have led to the sensing of heat. The discussion about what precisely is happening at Yellowstone is ongoing and far from conclusive. According to Robert Porritt, a seismologist at the University of Texas at Austin, in cases where plumes are responsible for seismic events, they can typically be traced to the boundary between the Earth's core and mantle. Geoscientists can usually determine the depth of these plumes, which is typically around 2,900 kilometers below the Earth's surface. However, Yellowstone presents a unique situation with a depth of around 1,000 kilometers, which doesn't seem sufficient to explain the observed events. Porritt finds the idea of the Farallon plate sinking intriguing, but isn't entirely convinced by it based on the most recent data. So, while the media often highlights the threat of a world-altering supervolcano, and scientists emphasize the extremely low likelihood of such an eruption, the reality is that no one seems to have a definitive answer about what's happening at Yellowstone Park. Whether the increasing rate of earthquakes is an anomaly or a sign of things to come, millions of tourists still visit the park each year, especially to see the caldera. With fingers crossed, all eyes are on one of the most breathtaking natural and national parks in the world and the remote possibility it holds for a planet-changing supervolcanic eruption. Thank you for watching another episode of Space Zone. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.